G'day everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome back once again to another video and today we're talking about once again another one or two Saw X TV spots. Now, forgive me, I know that this video or these TV spots were sent to me a couple days ago by a bunch of you lovely people in the comments section, whether that was over on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, a lot of you linked these videos to me, a lot of you linked this marketing and sent them to me, so I appreciate that. One of you actually linked me this very TV spot we're mainly going to be focusing on during my Saw the Video Game live stream the other night, which was awesome, thank you so much. But I kind of didn't get to it because, um... I was kind of busy trying to deal with over the last like two days trying to deal with file corruptions for the Scream TV series reactions. I had recorded episodes five through nine. Unfortunately, I will have to say that they will no longer be continuing because episodes five and eight had file corruptions regarding not the movie itself, but my webcam and audio. Meaning that for me to actually post videos, You'd either have to do without episode 5 and 8, and just have episodes 6, 7, and 9 for season 1, or I record episodes 5 and 8 again, where I'd be basically reacting to it fake. Like, I'd be providing fake reactions, and I don't want to do that. I want credibility, I want to be genuine with you guys regarding my first time watches. So, unfortunately, I won't be going ahead with them, due to the reason that I was dealing with a bunch of issues uh, with file corruption, of which I can't retrieve any footage from whatsoever, unfortunately. And I don't feel like going through the painful, time-consuming process that I had to go through to get audio and files and all that back regarding um, the Grave Encounters reaction I posted last year. That took a couple days to get resolved. This, I just don't have the time nor the energy. Um, and even then, the videos wouldn't turn out the best. They wouldn't be what they should be, for that matter, and it's very upsetting because they were good videos, I was excited to post them, but I can't provide anything that's fake or not top tier in my opinion. Um, so I, I do apologize for that, guys, but the movie reactions will be continuing. I have reactions to Creep, I have reactions to um, Hell Hell's LLC, and I also have, um, what is it, Laid to Rest 1 and 2 in the works as well, Chrome Skull. So um, those will be happening uh, very, very soon. Bear with me, they take time. But yeah, just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update because I know a lot of you were asking in the comments section about the Scream reactions as well. Um, so I'm sorry for those of you who were excited, but I can't provide you something that's fake, nor can I provide you something that's not, you know, top tier quality in my eye at least, or something that's at least passable and serviceable to post. But in the meantime, let's talk some more Saw X. So over the past week, there have been quite a bit of things regarding marketing for Saw 10 coming into the works. One of them was actually, jo um, Tobin Bell, John Kramer himself, basically in the old bathroom reminiscing over the days of filming the old movies, filming the original and the ones following, how no one apparently wanted to eat with him during the filming of the first film, which is really sad. Um, I feel really bad for Tobin Bell, even though, you know, he was covered in blood and everything and was laying on the floor for most of the day. You know, no one deserves to be treated like that on set or anything like that. I'm glad that he has his Saw family now. He's got his fans and all those who love him in the Saw community, as well as those who make these movies that absolutely love and adore him now. But seriously, why did no one want to eat with the guy? Like, it was just makeup. Why did no one want to fucking eat with him in the first movie? But we also got two other TV spots, and there's not much to talk about. There is there is some stuff to talk about regarding the, um, the TV spots that the official Saw account did post over the last couple days. You know, I'll just play them for you now so you get an idea of what I'm trying to say more than anything else. Like, there's a there's a shot or two here and there that we can talk about. Hello, everyone. It's time to play a game. <laughs> Saw X, September 29th. It's time to play a game. All the men to cheat. You pick John Kramer. And the interesting part about these TV spots is the fact that there isn't really much to talk about. What I will talk about regarding this first one, though, however, is the fact that we can see clearly here that the tape gets dropped down. Hello, everyone. It's time. And we have this brand new shot right here, and I love the looming John Kramer behind. I, I don't know the character's name, do forgive me, but this is all made with the pipe bomb strapped to his arm with what seems like razor wire or barbed wire, and he has the duct tape and the scalpels attached to his hand at the same time. But what's fascinating to me is if I get a look at him right here, I look at the hair, I look at the, uh, the t-shirt and everything, 
he does look oddly reminiscent of our favorite man in the vacuum trap later on. Like, you look at the hair there and then the shirt there. Like, granted, the shirt looks a little bit higher, but it's still the white and everything, but... I don't know, there's just something about this that looks... Nah, he's got a different shirt, or never mind, ignore me, I'm just fucking stupid. But like, I love the looming John Kramer behind him while he is clearly listening to the tape, and it's like that realization of, this isn't really someone fucking with me, this isn't a game. Well, it is a game in John's eyes, but this is a test. This is a test, this is a trap, I've got to do this thing that the tape is saying. Like, this is the moment with John just luring out. I don't think we've ever seen a tape really get played where John is looking over them simultaneously. Like, even in Jigsaw, when he gave the rules and everything, it was him providing the rules. When it came to Lynn Denlin in Saw 3, it was him providing the rules. It wasn't a tape, and Amanda was there too. There was really nothing of any sort in any previous Saw movie, aside from maybe the original, when John was talking, uh, was laying in the middle of the bathroom, that he was taking a front row seat, of which we have seen at least, to them listening to the tape, that realization, that fear, and he looks pissed off, he looks so serious in this, like, I am not fucking around, I am not playing any quote-unquote games with you, this is real life, you have to live or die, make your choice, like, it's a horrifying sight almost. And then we've also got this one shot right here of him once again. And it's almost as if he's, well, of course he's going to be excruciating pain, but it almost looks like from, it's not like pain. It's almost like waking up almost in disbelief or crying or whatever. Because if I'm looking down here, he's got the, oh no, he is in pain because you can, ha, ah, ha, ah, let me remove the webcam for a second. You can actually see the blood on the scalpel right here. You can actually see the blood, that's ac that's actually a really cool look at, um, what is it, Pighead? You can see right there, the actual blood on the scalpel. So he's clearly cutting himself, and it looks almost like it's edged as well, like it's not a scalpel scalpel. It looks almost rusted and almost like it's chipped in a way as well, which would be even more excruciating in my opinion. Like, that's horrifying. So that that's really cool that we've got that. But the big one I want to talk about is actually this TV spot right here that Kevin Grutert himself posted on social media. Kevin Grutert actually posted this to his TikTok account a couple days ago, where it also features his lovely wife, uh, Elizabeth Rowan, I believe her name is. Lovely, lovely woman, she seems. And, you know, I love her support to him more than anything else. And you'll, you'll see in a moment. I'll play the TV spot for you. But she looks so ecstatic for him and so ecstatic for this movie and the excitement that they both have for this movie coming out is awesome. So I'll shut up for a second and let you guys watch it and then we'll go through the TV spot because even though it's not like a HD version, it's Kevin Groot at posting this by new recording and I'm posting on TikTok. It is still really awesome to see a lot of new shots, like a lot of new shots in this trailer that we can go through and talk about. Saw a commercial on The Bachelorette. Like, this is a really cool TV spot because not only does it really feel like Saw, like the fact that they have the Hello Zep um, theme by Charlie Klauser in there as well is really awesome. We get a little bit of a rendition on what his take on the classic theme will be this time around, which it, it sounds fucking awesome, by the way. But the amount of new shots in this and certain bits of dialogue are very fascinating to me. Like, so let's play through it again so we can sort of break it down a little bit because there's there's a lot to break down here, I feel. Hello, everyone. You have played your last card game, but not your last game. So that line right there, first of all, Elizabeth Rowan right there with the thumbs up, the enthusiasm, and the big smile on her face. I love it so much. I love the support she has for her husband. Um, regarding these gory, gory, fucked up movies that we all seem to love as well. But what I love here is that line that John provides. Hello, everyone. You have played your last con game, but not your last game. Hello, everyone. You have played your last con game, but not your last game. That is such an ominous and very Jigsaw-type line. Like, it is so 
menacing, and it's like, I am fucking serious, you guys fucked me over, you fucked all these other people over, now I'm gonna fuck you over, and, like, a lot of people have criticized this movie in regards to the direction it's going with the character of Jigsaw, in regards to him being a hypocrite, him being like, it can never be personal, when he was speaking to Hoffman, or when he was speaking to Amanda, but he's making it personal here, I feel like this is an experience thing. I actually like the fact that we are possibly getting, because we don't know for a fact if this is a personal game or not, it definitely seems that way, but if this game is a personal test for him, he's going to be testing himself the same way he tested Amanda in Saw 3 almost, and not only that, we're going to see a very different, very human side of Jigsaw, because Jigsaw has always been about testing them, and he's always been very hypocritical about it in regards to the type of people he tests, in regards to how he goes about things, the types of traps, and what they have to sacrifice, the simplicity to the, you know, the elaborate nature of them. And like, there's always metaphorical reasoning as to why they're being tested in this certain exact trap, but at the same time, he has been hypocritical which is something I've been discussing quite extens in extensively in my however many years later series for the Saw movies, which the Saw 3 one is up now. Um, Saw 4 is coming very, very soon, by the way. I've got that video recorded as well as the Saw 5 one. They're coming this week. They are both coming this week. I can't wait to provide them. But at the same time, we are going to be... This is John Kramer's movie, and this was said at the Saw X panel at Midsummer Scream, and how... This is going to show a very human side of Jigsaw, and I feel like him feeling those real emotions of rage and anger and wanting it to be personal is a side we've never really seen of Jigsaw before. The closest I feel we've ever gotten to that is what whatever her name was, Anna, did to her husband in Jigsaw, and then him testing her because she killed the baby, even though there was no way in fuck he could have known that she was the one that actually killed the baby. We will talk about that in the Jigsaw video, but... um. Here, I actually like that it feels very personal, and I love the look of the locations in this. Like, really quickly, if we play again, like, we get a brief look at Mateo here. Like, I, that's Mateo. That's clearly Mateo. And then if we go back a little bit, obviously we have all the characters here. Billy coming in with his little cart for the brain surgery trap. I, I again, I've got to point out this shot right here. One, Amanda. My love, I love you very much. Shawnee Smith, I, I love you to death. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> but I've got to say, like, the location here feels very old school Saw. I love the use of the orange lighting in the window to the green lighting and tinge in the room itself, from the warm to the cold. It is very old school Saw in regards to just lighting and aesthetic, the very old look with the old computer system sitting on the desk behind them with all the filing cabinets. This feels like the original Saw series in regards to the original timeline from Saw 1 through 7. And I, I think the set design here is actually really good in regards to replicating the time of which these movies were made and set. Uh, so, oh, and another thing I want to point out as well, actually, I forgot to mention just there. So, with this shot here, he's talking into a microphone down to the people um, that he's testing, and you can see the little control panel to sort of, I guess, either activate a trap or activate some mechanism in the room or to be able to talk. That one looks like Amanda's hand, not John Kramer's. That... No, that might be John's hand, actually, now that I get a better frame of it. But here, you know, I, I just think him talking down to them and being like, I want to play a game. Like, I just think him talking down to them directly and not through a tape is something we rarely got to see. And the fact that he's in this little observation booth re represents and more or less supports the idea that this is very personal almost. And I love that in this. I really love that. This right here almost looks like... It's a part of the, um, what is it, the, I'm gonna call it the razor wire. I, I, I don't know what it's actually fucking called. I know, I don't know what the trap's called just yet, but the trap where Valentina is in the trap and it has the wire near her neck, she has to hack off her leg, it looks like. Spoiler alert, a lot of you were mad at me for not having a spoiler alert, so if you wanna, you know, avoid spoilers, just go forward in the video, like, you know, to this point, this point, I'm gonna discuss it quickly, minor spoiler, maybe, I don't know if it's a spoiler, but, um, it was in the trailer, so I don't see it as much of a spoiler, but we seemingly see Valentina's dead body in a frame of the trailer, so she doesn't survive, but this looks like it's a part of the mechanism that's actually moving the wire backwards, or at least the device that the wire is attached to. I don't know, this could be a part of an entirely different trap, we could be getting a brief look at a brand new trap right here, for all we know, but it's just, the way it's designed, the color, the build of it all and everything it looks like something that would be a part of that trap um 
I think it looks cool. I love the old school design of it. The gears after playing saw the video game is sort of giving me PTSD. Um, <laughs> but this is cool. I like this. Saw a commercial on The Bachelorette. There we go, there's that line from Costas Mandalore once again. That is clearly Costas Mandalore's voice saying, Of all the men to cheat, you picked John Kramer. Like, it's it's clearly, you know, Costas Mandalore's voice as Hoffman. You can't convince me otherwise. And the voice actors from all the different regions and countries ended up returning as well to dub the Hoffman character. Like, all the people and all the voice actors who dubbed Hoffman in, you know, with their respective languages back in 2004 to 2010 return to do those lines for the trailer, so obviously I have a feeling that it is Costas Mandalore. Here's another look at what will be the belly scratcher, or, you know, what I imagine is a disembowelment trap, um, more than anything else. We get a little bit of a better look here, it hasn't got, like, that X on it, and it looks like those wires up the top here are actually controlling the gears, almost. Um, so that's actually a really cool thing that I can analyze right now, just a brief touch before I do my How to Beat video after the movie comes out, because I... We'll be seeing the movie countless times after it comes out in the span of a couple of days to sort of get together a How to Beat video for Saw X to try and get that up as early as possible for you guys as well. But yeah, we do get a little bit of a better look at the um, the belly scratcher or the disembowelment, whatever you want to call it. We don't exactly know what the trap does just yet, but that's the one with all the scalpers on it that are like hacking at someone's stomach. Um, we get a little bit of a look at that here. Obviously for the brain surgery trap. I love this set design right here. So this right here is actually Steven Brand, who is playing our cop detective in Saw X. Which, by the way, all the marketing is calling the movie Saw X, so stop coming at me in the comments section for calling it Saw X. The marketing, with the little voices going, Saw X in theater September 29th. That's what they're all saying. They're all saying Saw X. So I'm going to refer to it as Saw X, not Saw 10. But at the same time, like... I love the look of this. This looks almost as if it's like a very similar set. I know it's not the same location. It's an abandoned hospital. But at the same time, I love the look of this location and how it feels very much so like it's in the same grungy and very worn down aesthetic of the nerve gas house from Saw 2 or the test of the Fatal 5 from Saw 5. Or even, I'll say it, you know, the warehouse, um, what is it, sort of game with Jeff in Saw 3. I think that this location with all the rugged sort of old furniture, the lighting and the really high ceiling with the very dirty cement walls is such a cool aesthetic for movies like this and especially the Saw series. The Saw series kind of made it a staple in my opinion after a while. Um... But it looks really cool, and you can even see another look at it right there. Why like, the green lighting, so cool. And we get a better look at Stephen Brand in this situation, um, compared to what it was in the trailer, where it was a very brief. This is a little bit of a wider and longer shot that we get of him going through. Um, I can't wait to see Stephen Brand, um, in this role. Yeah, Valentina, gonna die. Oh, boy, okay, I want to talk about this for a second. Um... What did they do to my girl Shawnee Smith? What did they do to my girl, to my girl fucking Amanda? Why does she have the bob haircut that fucking, um, what's her name? Gail Weathers had in Scream 3. I, I, I want to know who did this because holy fuck. Why couldn't they have just tried to replicate the hairstyle from Saw 2 almost? <sighs> it's so upsetting because I, I know it's not her fault and I love the character so much, but it doesn't look great. I, the wig, it looks bad. It looks off-putting. I, bad. Bad hair, bad. This is not retribution. That's another shot right there. So, one, I love the fact that we get a brief inside look, which was in the trailer as well, for the vacuum trap with the eyeballs. But I, I actually want to talk about it very briefly. Because I have a friend of mine who I've become quite close with over the last couple of weeks. Um, and she was actually at the panel for Midsummer Scream for Saw X. And she told me about the clip in regards to the trap, the vacuum trap that was shown. And the details that she went into regarding this was absolutely nuts. And I can't wait to see this trap. She said it was so disgusting, but in the best way possible, that the eyes are almost bulging. Like they are bulging apparently throughout the trap while he's breaking his fingers. The trap is already on, and the eyes are fucking... Like, not popping out, obviously. The vacuum's not strong enough yet, but it is popping out his eyes out of the sockets 
And, you know, there's obviously going to be permanent damage there already, like, even if he did succeed in his task, which we know he fucking doesn't, he dies. Because she told me about how, what it looks like when the eyes get sucked out, and she said it is so utterly and indescribably gross. But I think the little detail that the eyes during the trap as well are bulging adds to the fear factor, and also how difficult this trap is seems like it's more than what it seems on surface level because on surface level oh break your fingers instead of lose your eyes easy done easy fucking peasy but when you've already got that pain going through your eyes and they're already being sucked out there's obviously going to be that mental hesitation right there like the fact that his eyes are already getting sucked and are bulging while he has to break all five of his fingers is gnarly it's disgusting and i absolutely fucking love it i can't wait to see this trap in action guys i i seriously can't but the last thing i want to talk about regarding this TV spot that we have here is this shot right here. Now, I'm not a fan of the CG smoke, if that's what it is. It looks pretty bad. But at the same time, we've got a bunch of chains here attached to a bunch of cogwheels. Now, I'm going to bring up the original trailer for a second just to give you a few screenshots to give you an idea of why this is so interesting. So if I scroll forward to the traps here, Obviously, you can see certain characters like Peterson with the shackle around her neck. Where is it? Where's the next one? You've also got Gabriella here. Uh, Mateo has one around his leg, it seems, but that is attached to a pole, which is fascinating. It doesn't look like Valentina has one, but that's because she's too busy with a rope around her neck with these little razor wires almost just surrounding her. And it is a horrifying fucking sight. But if I continue going forward right here, you can kind of get an idea as to who is attached to what. So you have the chains right here, and then you have this chain leading out. It looks almost brazen bull style. I'll bring that up once again. But if we go to the shots, hang on a second. No, nah, nothing particularly interesting on these screens here. Just Mateo squatting like he needs to take shit. Um, so if we go here, we can clearly see that Mateo is still attached to the, um, what is it, the wall here. Gabriella is also not attached to any device exactly. She's just chained to this little, you know, pole or whatever the hell that is on the ground. And then you see Peterson attached to the device in the stage. And if I keep going forward, we'll get a better example of this. So as you can see here, she has her leg attached to this little anvil, I'm going to say, on top of a pallet. And then her arm is attached to another one altogether. So I need to ask, why is one attached to something that's leading out of the frame, maybe to another mechanism, and why is one attached to this other heavy device near a pallet? I need to point that out for a second, because that's a very odd choice. You can see where it's like wrapped around there, but it's not like she can really break the rules exactly. That looks like a dead body in the corner there, by the way. I just want to, like, if I turn off the camera there. Like, it kind of looks like a dead body right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I, I just want to point that out. Um... So then we have this look at Gabriella here, who is sort of hanging by something. And we get another look at that later in the trailer as well, right around here. So she still has the chain attached here to this pallet. But she's being lifted off the ground, as you can see here. Where is it? By literally just her left arm. So I wouldn't know what the go is, but... This is what I wanted to point out. This is what I wanted to point out. You see this little device right here. It looks almost like it's involving heat or radiation or something, as a lot of you have pointed out to me in the comments. But you can see one, two, three, four chains. If I go back to the other one with that um, TV spot, you can see one, two, three, four chains. I have a feeling that this is the mechanism actually controlling the device that is actually for Gabriella, her trap. Because you can see the four chains. In reality, I actually think you can see more. I think four of them, from my count, I can see about... One, two, three, four, five chains. I can see about five chains there. Possibly one's for her arm to lift her up, and either the anvil's not heavy enough and it gets lifted up with her, or there's something else involving, like, tearing off her leg. I don't fucking know. I highly doubt that's the case. But... With this as well, it looks like this is for the device that is actually for Gabriella's trap because of the four chains and then the one that's obviously lifting her up. It it, it kind of has to be, especially with the red orangey type light, which is very reminiscent of the light that is let off in her trap as well. I just thought this was a very interesting detail to point out for you guys. Um, yeah, I, I, I still have no fucking guesses as to what this trap could be. 
I, I, I'm absolutely fucking clueless. I am a dumb as a bag of bricks when it comes to what this contraption could actually potentially be or what it is for, what it's representing, what it's going to do to her. I am clueless. I have no fucking clue. It's a reawakening. It's a reawakening. It's no retribution. It's a reawakening. Love that line so much. But that'll be my analysis of the new TV spots that have come out for Saw X recently. Um, there was quite a bit to talk about there, surprisingly enough, for, you know, TV spots. There was a lot of new footage in that one that Kevin Gruder po uh, posted on social media. And I love how enthusiastic he and his wife are, um, Elizabeth Rowan. It's really awesome to see. Um, this video will probably be posted about a day after actually recording it. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I've got work tomorrow. Um, and it's a 10, 12 hour shift. So I need to be in bed like an hour ago um, to get enough rest for my shift. But I just wanted to talk about this for you guys after the bullshit and not having a video up for you guys this weekend because, you know, problems, editing, and, you know, footage corruptions. Uh, shit happens as a content creator and making videos. Things happen. There's nothing we can really do about that. But guys, thank you so much once again for the constant love and support regarding Saw X and all the content I've been putting out recently. It really does mean a lot. And all your love and support helps me make more videos, helps YouTube recognize me in the algorithm so that it can be recommended to more newer viewers as well. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Do be sure to check out more videos coming very soon regarding general reviews, movie reactions, and Saw related. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.